Hi, hello everybody. Welcome to another webinar this week. Uh, today we are heading over to Milan, Italy. Uh, we will be here with Politecnico di Milano, who will be here to talk all things art, architecture and design. Um, we have a couple of students with us today, um, one from Cullen and Spencer, who have kindly given us their time to talk things through with you and to answer any questions should you have any, um, please feel free to ask us questions. We do love a question in our webinars and we will get to those at the very end of our webinar. Um, the question box is just at the bottom of your screen on the Q&A and we will get to those at the very end. Okay, so Francesca, it's over to you. Thank you, thank you, Stavarula. And uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Francesca, and I'm from the Students Recruitment Office of Politecnico di Milano. Uh, I thank you for joining uh, this webinar today, and I also wish to thank our students, Colin and Spencer, joining us. Uh, they are studying uh, urban planning, and um, Colin is studying urban planning, and Spencer is a, a building architecture student. So thank you, and welcome. Uh, to all of you. Um, so let's start with our presentation. I um, will share my screen and we will start our presentation, first of all, uh, with uh, an introduction about Politecnico di Milano. So what is Politecnico di Milano? Um, we are the oldest university in Milan, actually. And uh, Politecnico is a very well-renowned university in Italy and internationally. And it's a technical university. So as you see here, we focus on architecture, design, and engineering studies only. Politecnico is, uh, as the name says, is located in Milan. So Milan is situated, as you see from the map, in the north part of Italy. Uh, it is a, a really important city on the point of view of uh, economy and finance in Italy. Uh, but also uh, very well renowned uh, as an international capital of fashion and design. And uh, innovation also plays an important role. And uh, Milan is characterized uh, by an international and uh, dynamic atmosphere. So many people from all over the world visit our city, uh, especially for fashion and design. Uh, but also for, um, for studying in, in Milan. Uh, we are a student city hosting, uh, welcoming each year more than 180,000 students, university students. So we have many university, many good universities in Milan. And Politecnico is the technical part of the university, of the universities in Milan. And last but not least, uh, Milan is located uh, very well, strategically speaking, because it's uh, uh, at the heart of Europe. So uh, you can easily reach other cities in Europe uh, and other cities in Italy, of course. Our students uh, did uh, and are enjoying uh, their life in Milan and in Italy. Um, I take this opportunity to, to ask our students, uh, Colin and Spencer, about your uh, experience so far uh, in Milan. So, yeah, what about can, your experience? Yeah, I can go first. Um, so just yeah. as Francesca was saying, Milan is very well connected by three pretty big airports and also a lot of um, train stations. So it's it's well connected to the rest of Italy, it's quite easily um, easy to see other parts of Italy, but also um, pretty quick to get to France or Switzerland or Austria um, or Slovenia and, and keep taking trains or however you want to travel um, further past there. Um, I've had less homework than I thought I would actually in my graduate program. So most weekends I was able to at least either go to Lake Como or one of the lakes nearby Milan or um, travel out of the country as well. So um, it, yeah, it's it's very well connected. There's a lot to do in the, the city if you don't have the time to, to travel. Um, there was actually just a, a fashion show at uh, Polini about two weeks ago. There was a, a runway show in the architecture building, which is pretty cool. But um, design week is probably the, the most exciting event of the year, in my opinion. 
Yeah, and okay. as Spencer said, um, there's just so many international activities. I think um, like the Salon de Mobile, the the Design Week. Um, there's also a lot. There's just a sphere I think of creativity, design that kind of permeates the entire city. Um, there's so much history here, but there's also so much, so many like new thinkers and creative thinkers. I think working in the city. Um, so you know, you're bound to find there's so many museums and and different activities. You're bound to find a place that you can you know. Uh, you know, call your own and that kind of thing. So I definitely recommend it. And you're not far away from, as Spencer said, the Alps, or you're a three-hour train right away from from Rome. Um, you know, not far away from France. I'm going to France next weekend. So it's a uh, it's pretty it's pretty convenient um, in that sense. Thank you very much. So uh, let's move to. Um, to the next part. So Politecnico is actually a large university. Overall, we have six campuses and the two main campuses are located in Milan. So within the city of Milan, Milano Leonardo and Milano Bovisa. Our students uh, here today are studying in Milano Leonardo campus. Uh, Milano Bovisa campus hosts uh, mainly design, all the design courses uh, and some engineering courses, while the other campuses located in the region, in the same region, uh, except for Piacenza, which is in, in uh, another close region, are one hour and a half more or less uh, distant from Milan, and they host uh, programs that are connected somehow to the territory. So there's always a connection between our university, our programs and the territory. For example, uh, Mantova, that is the last campus you see here, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So it's an historical city um, and hosts a program dedicated to architecture and preservation of cultural heritage. So the program is very well linked to, to that territory. Or another example, Cremona, is the city, um, is typically uh, initially considered the city of stringed instruments, where the Stradivari violin was created. So in this campus, we have a program in music and acoustic engineering, once again related to uh, something uh, typical of the territory. Let's move on. So mm -hmm. research is the central part uh, at Politecnico di Milano, is the central part of the Politecnico di Milano mission as um, the quality of research uh, influences also the didactic aspect uh, uh, of, uh, of our university. And we are um, the first university in Italy for projects founded by the European Union. This means that the quality of research done at Politecnico di Milano is very high. And research produ has produced throughout the year um, 2,600 patents, so a lot of patents, uh, a lot of spin offs. And um, we strongly benefit from cutting edge laboratories. So there are more than 200 very, um, very good laboratories that are used by our researchers along with the companies. So also companies can use our laboratories. And here you have uh, some examples. So we have the wind tunnel that is one of the largest in Europe and is the laboratory used for all type of wind related experiments. Uh, so to test uh, aircraft, helicopters, but also buildings, etc., bridges, etc. And it's also used, for example, uh, by the Olympic sportsmen to test uh, their equipment, but uh, also by the companies, as I was saying, to test their prototypes. Other laboratories, for example, Polyfab for micro and nano um, devices, uh, Labora, that is uh, an architectural laboratory of uh, physical and virtual modeling, uh, very new. We opened it uh, uh, two years ago and other uh, very good laboratories. Uh, some words about the education system in Italy, because it may be slightly different from, from your education system. So very briefly, um, in Italy, we have 13 years of schooling before starting university. And then the university studies are uh, divided in three levels. So we have the first level called the laurea, 
lasting three years, and it's equivalent to a Bachelor of Science in the British system. Um, and we have two bachelors taught in English. The majority of programs held in English, so we offer a lot of programs in English, the majority of them are held uh, um, at uh, master level, master and PhD level. So uh, after the Bachelor of Science, you can continue your studies with two year Laurea Magistrale program, Master of Science. And uh, we have for you uh, 41 programs taught in English, in architecture, design, and engineering. And later on, we will see all the programs available. After the Laurea Magistrale, uh, our student, the majority of our students uh, enter the job market with very good employability rates. Uh, other students decide to continue their academic path with a dottorato di ricerca, so a PhD program lasting three years. And all our PhD programs are held in English. So we have 20 PhD programs. Let's see um, another important aspect of Politecnico di Milano, and that's the um, the presence of a lot of international students. So we do, uh, we promote a lot Politecnico internationally, uh, as we we strongly believe in the importance of uh, uh, the ideas exchange and uh, the importance of meeting people from all over the world. Our students make really strong connections during their uh, their studies here, and it's really uh, useful and it's really something, uh, um, an added value to meet students from all over the world. We have more than 7,000 international students enrolled in Polimi, coming from more than 100 countries, and the majority of our international students are enrolled, uh, as you see, in the postgraduate programs. Uh, like, likewise, uh, Colin and Spencer. Um, maybe you want to add something because I know that your program is, uh, especially uh, hosts, uh, welcomes a lot of international students. Is it right? Yeah, uh, there are, I have I have many international fellow international students um, in my course um, from all over the world, from Mexico to Iran to Canada, um, the U.S. and across Europe. Um, and there's a really great program called the Erasmus Student Network, which um, kind of connects um, students from abroad um, to Italian students and to Italian universities. And they put on a, a bunch of events, different um, kind of parties and other you know, activities. Um, there's a ski event, a ski trip and that kind of thing. Um, and it's a really good way of meeting people from across across yeah, the globe. So I would say it's a great, great way of, of, again, meeting new people, not just Italians, but also People from all over, and it's also a great way of kind of seeing how other people operate in their workflows and their their uh, different kind of back educational background is really interesting. Um, because for me, looking at a master's program, I didn't want to necessarily do the same thing that I had done in undergrad in the American system. I kind of wanted to try and learn a new uh, new educational system and kind of you know see how that how that worked out. And um, for me, it's it's really interesting to kind of hear from you know to kind of be in the Italian system and also hear from. Um, all the other international students who have different backgrounds than, than myself. Thank you, Colin. Thank you very much. Maybe Spencer, you want to add something? Yeah, I don't have a lot to add. That was a pretty pretty good summary. But I think because there are so many international students um, coming from faraway countries, many people are in the same situation when you first get to campus in a new country where you might be anxious about meeting new people. But everyone has been really friendly and I've made a lot of um, great friends through events from the Erasmus Student Network and in um, in classes because, yeah, again, everyone is in the same situation and is overall very friendly. The, that's good. That's good for me to hear that as well. So let's, let's move uh, further. And... Um, Let's have a look at, well, something, I spent some word about uh, uh, Italian language. So if you are interested in studying at Politecnico di Milano, uh, as you saw, the majority of programs are held in English. So you are not required to speak Italian language to enroll at Polimi. 
Um, however, we ask our students, uh, uh, as we care about uh, uh, your life at Polimi, mm -hmm. about your future opportunities uh, to work mm -hmm. maybe in Italy, um, we offer Italian language courses for free to all our international students. And um, this is very useful for not only to make new friends, but also to, if you plan to work or to do an internship at an Italian company, to uh, visit new places in Italy and to learn the local culture. Um, and uh, as I was saying, uh, they are completely free of charge. Um, but we expect our students uh, to, um, to acquire some basic, at least the basic language of Italian before graduation. So we offer the course, but you uh, will have to learn some Italian before the graduation. And as far as I know, our students uh, uh, just did uh, the exam, uh, the Italian language exam. Am I right? Yeah, I just did mine last week. And I feel, I feel like I have learned a lot in a sem semester, but if you do decide to come to Italy and you know in like May or so that you're coming, you should maybe, I would recommend learning earlier so that when you get here, you know at least a little bit. Um, I, I didn't take any courses and I was, I was fine. I, I managed just okay. But I think Colin probably had a little bit of an easier time talking with people in Italian once he first got here just having taken a little bit of Italian before so um, you feel like you can read and, and speak and understand a little bit better before getting here but yeah I, I managed just fine not having taken Italian before yeah I would, I would add it's uh you know learning a new language is always I think a, it's a great asset um, and Italian if you if you already know some Spanish or French from high school which a lot of I know Anglophone um, Americans and Can Canadians um, do know then it's not actually that difficult to to kind of take up Italian and I would just say as long as you try to speak Italian to Italians they are absolutely um, you know amazed and, and love it when I, I feel like at least in my experience they are obsessed when someone you know even attempts um, you know past just ciao um, people are very very impressed and excited and want to learn more about your background and where you're from and they they just I think are super super welcoming in general, but super you get super excited when someone, especially an American or a Canadian, um, an Anglophone person, an English speaking person, tries to speak Italian. Um, so I would definitely encourage, like Spencer said, to take um, a course before if you can, and if not, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, the courses here are great, and I think if Francesca, I'm not sure if you mentioned, there's also the other international languages you can take as well um, at Polytechnico, like French, Russian. I think Japanese and German. Um, so definitely take advantage of those as well if you are interested in, in those languages, because again, you're only a two hour train ride from France. You're, you know, an hour, less than an hour train ride from Swiss Germany, you know, from German Swiss speaking people um, from Austria and that kind of thing. So if you really want to practice your German or your French, you can, you can just hop on a train um, and that kind of thing. Thank you very much. That's really, exactly what I wanted to tell the students. So um, let's see the programs. Let's see the programs, what you can study at Politecnico di Milano. So here you have a list of our Master of Science programs, all of them held in English, in architecture and design. So as you, as you can see from the list, uh, we have different um, programs in architecture, um, covering the different facets of architecture. So starting from design and history, so focusing on historical heritage preservation, uh, then we have building architecture, built environments and interiors, so focusing on, um, on built environment and on a part of interiors, um, architecture and urban design, focusing on the um, developing countries' architecture, uh, landscape, of course, landscape architecture, and uh, uh, sustainable architecture which is more related to environment um, environment and sustainability and urban planning so these are our program in architecture held in English 
Then we have the, in the design part. So once again, uh, different fields of design are available. Um, Milan especially is very well renowned for fashion design, but also product design and interior design. And um, so you can study, of course, fashion design, uh, product design, interior interaction design. But we also have a program, a very interesting program in design and engineering. So it's a, it's a blend of product design, mechanical engineering, and materials engineering. It's a very interesting program as well. And the last program, communication design, is available in Italian or in English. So. This course is available in the two different languages. As far as engineering, I will not list all the program because there are so many. Consider that Politecnico was originally established uh, as an engineering university. So um, it's, uh, it was born as an engineering university and then we uh, start introducing architecture and, and design. Uh, and so in engineering, basically you can study everything from uh, aeronautical and agricultural engineering. Um, we have a, new, a relatively new program in food engineering uh, and also other, other new programs uh, are um, cyber strategy and governance along with another university of, in Milan. So there are many, many programs available. And I suggest you to, uh, to visit later on our website to see the, the curriculum uh, of the courses. So how to apply? Um, as you are interested in studying at Politecnico di Milano, um, ha we have a look now at the application procedure. Uh, there is an application, so students uh, uh, are evaluated, as you see here, on the basis of your application documents and on the basis of your previous study career. So it's important first to check what are the entry requirements. So in general, the core requirements um, are uh, to have a bachelor degree in uh, the same field of studies or in a related field of studies and an English language certificate. Of course, if you are um, from uh, an English speaking country or if you are studying at your university in English, of course, you are not required to provide a, an English language certificate. Uh, how to apply? So these were the main entry requirements. How, how does it work? So the application is fully online. You need to register on our website. Um, then you need to insert all your university information. Uh, you will select the program or the programs because you can apply to up to two programs at the same time at Politecnico. And, and then you will have to upload your documents. We will have a look in the next slide. Uh, what are these documents? Uh, last step is uh, in order to submit your application, you will have to pay a 50 euro uh, application fee. And that's it. So the application is simple. Um, if you want to find out more, of course, you can scan the QR code and, and visit our part related to the application procedure. And, um, and now let's have a look at the documents required for the application. So first of all, you will see that we uh, make a distinction between mandatory documents and optional documents. So of course you need, you will have to provide uh, your academic qualification. So your qualification, or if you are on the final year uh, statement by your university um, declaring that you are on the final year of your bachelor studies, uh, your official transcripts, so the document containing all um, the exams you have passed, uh, the grades and the, the hours uh, of the courses, your curriculum vitae. Uh, related to this document, um, I wanted to, uh, to tell you that um, we do not require our students, uh, our applicants to have worked before. Some university do um, require our uh, applicants uh, to have uh, some um, some job, uh, uh, some previous job, uh, but we do not require any to you to have worked before studying. So 
um, if you have done it, of course, it will be a plus and you can insert it in the curriculum vitae. If not, uh, it's not uh, essential. It's not essential. Uh, then students interested in architecture and design have to provide a portfolio that is a really important document uh, and it's considered like a, the business card for architects and designers. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, language proficiency. Of course, if you are, as I was mentioning, if you are studying uh, uh, in a English speaking country, you are not required to provide any English language proof. If not, these are the uh, accepted, um, accepted English proofs. In addition, you can also provide some documents, uh, uh, some optional documents, if you want to increase the chances to, to be admitted at Politecnico di Milano. One is the GRE for engineering and architecture courses. Uh, then you can add a, a letter of motivation stating the reasons why you apply to Politecnico di Milano. One letter of recommendation by one of your professors and uh, course program descriptions that may, this last document may be asked uh, during the evaluation system, the evaluation procedure by our international admission office. So this is, this document contains, uh, usually is downloadable from your university, uh, university website and contains a description of the courses you have attended in the bachelor program. Uh, when can you apply to Politecnico? So now, as you see, we have an application call open until March the 2nd for the September 2023 intake. So the first semester uh, intake. So these are the periods when you can apply to the first semester. Only for engineering, uh, you can also apply for the second semester and the application will be open from May to July. Second semester starts in uh, February 2024. So these are the periods, the application periods. Um, I want to um, put some emphasis on uh, a document uh, required to apply for architecture and design that is uh, really important, as I was saying, the portfolio. Um, because it's uh, uh, really um, the most important document showing how do you work, how, do you, how what is your reasoning process when you um, when you create a project, and uh, it, it's important for it to be um, to be a collection of your best works, uh, um, preferably works that you have done during your bachelor studies. Uh, and um, as we have two architecture students, uh, I want to ask you. Uh, as you have been admitted with a scholarship and you are two architecture students, maybe you can provide our students some suggestions on how to create a portfolio. So maybe Cullen? Do you yeah, I would, I would say for, in my experience, I submitted one that was, I think around maybe like 15, uh, 20 pages in total, um, 15 spreads and that kind of thing. So. I would say just be concise um, with the with number of pages and the number of projects that you're doing. There probably you know, there's no right or wrong answer, and every every portfolio is different in terms of um, you know the content and the you know the size of the project and you know what you're going to show and that kind of thing. But I think a general rule is to keep it under probably 30-ish pages for both you know professional and academic portfolios. And I would say again include mostly academic work, but if you have some professional work. Um, in my case, I worked for three years before applying. Um, so I had some professional work that I included, but my the majority of my work was academic, was from my undergraduate um, our five year architecture kind of course. Um, so I would say just be, be concise and only show your best work and don't feel like you need to cram a lot of things. White space is your friend, you know, use a lot of white space. Um, if you if you haven't heard that before, um, definitely a good reminder now. And yeah, I think that that's probably a pretty good general overview. I'd also say just in general, regarding the, the letter of motivation and some of the other optional documents, I would say it's probably best that you just go ahead and do them because I did them um, just because I think it helps, um, first of all, it helps, you know, it helps the record, the uh, evaluators determine, you know, and see your, your, uh, your seriousness about applying, but also I think it helps yourself understand why you're 
it helps you ask yourself why you're applying to Politecnico. Why would you want to go to Milan? Why do you want to go to this this particular university? And um, that I think is always a good exercise in kind of self reflecting on on uh, you know what you want out of your your next career move, your next life move, um, and that kind of thing. Very interesting tips. Yeah, those yes. are great tips. I think as much as possible, you want your portfolio to be able to speak for itself without you being there. So whether that requires some kind of short description or a series of diagrams and drawings that show your thought process, I think that's really important versus just showing a final product and like final floor plans as much as you can show your creative process or explain it in succinct words. I think that's really helpful. Um, they, I mean, th these are just general things, but like consistent, um, formatting and, and text and typeface throughout the whole thing is really important. Um, it's nice to have like page numbers and um, I don't know, I don't know. There's like some small formatting things that, that make it look really nice, like a table of contents. And you can also um, put part of your CV in it if you, if you want to. But um, I think for this, you don't need to, I think 15 pages is pretty good for spreads. I, I always felt bad about cutting out projects that I worked really hard on. There were projects from freshman and sophomore year that I was like, okay, but I spent a whole, I spent a whole semester doing this and it's fine. Like just cut it if it's not your best work, even if you put a lot of effort into it, um, just show your, show your best work, even if it means cutting out some, some things you still spent time on. And then for the additional documents, I didn't do the GRE and I, freaked out while like while that application call was happening because it was like shoot I didn't register for the GRE I didn't study I'm not going to get this done on time but it was fine I did the letter of motivation and the um, letter of recommendation and I think those are relatively quite a bit easier than doing the GRE and studying for the GRE so if you don't have time for it and haven't already done it um, I would definitely focus on the letter of motivation and um, maybe some of the other things. But yeah, if you don't have the GRE, don't freak out because I did and I wish <laughs> someone told me not to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Very, I think they are very useful and clear tips. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, an important part as well <laughs> that is about money. So how much is... Uh, studying at Politecnico di Milano. And here you have the prices of our courses. So all our programs uh, at Master of Science level uh, have the same price. So for a non-EU student, the price is um, 3,900 euros per year for two years of duration. For students with a European Union nationality, um, they can benefit from the same uh, um, tuition of the Italian students that range between 900 and 3,900 euros per year, according to the family income. So as you see, uh, as Politecnico di Milano is a public university, we receive many funds from uh, the Ministry of Education, from the government. Um, so um, it's relatively cheap to study at Politecnico di Milano. And in general, Italy offers very good um, university quality, university preparation uh, at a low price. In addition, there are many uh, scholarship opportunities for international students. Polytechnico itself uh, offers merit-based scholarships. So scholarship based uh, on your previous academic career. Um, and all of them include uh, um, tuition fee, uh, complete tuition fee waiver. So all of them cover the tuition. Uh, and some of them also include money to cover the accommodation costs, so gold scholarships. And uh, also there are scholarships available uh, covering all the costs, so including the accommodation costs and uh, the life expenses. So for good students, um, we offer this type of scholarships and there's no application required. So how does it work? You simply apply to the program or to the two programs you are interested in. 
there will be uh, the evaluation of our students and then a committee of professors will evaluate the admitted students and assign uh, one of these scholarships. There are uh, overall there are more or less around 200 scholarships. Of course, we have more silver available and then gold and platinum, a few platinum available. And uh, so if you are very good students uh, with a good GPA, you, you will be maybe selected for a merit-based scholarship. But have a look at uh, some additional opportunities uh, also, because um, the Italian government offers uh, uh, scholarships for international students, for example, the Maichi scholarships, or uh, there's another scholarship dedicated to some countries, which is called Invest Your Talent in Italy. But there are also uh, local government scholarships. So in some countries, um, you will be able, your country, maybe you will be able to find uh, um, a scholarship for studying abroad purposes. And for example, uh, today's students, uh, Cullen and Spencer, um, are here with the Fulbright Scholarship that is one of the most important scholarship offered in the United States. And, um, and I want to ask you uh, about, uh, uh, about the Fulbright. How is, how is it studying at Polytechnico with a Fulbright Scholarship? Maybe. Um, I, I would say it's, it's, it gives you generous funding. So that's, that's a really, a really nice thing right off the bat. Um, it also gives you um, a built-in network of, of people across the country and across the, you know, across the world. Um, but more specifically, you know, in Italy, who are also Fulbright scholars, we all kind of meet um, in October in Rome for our initial kind of inaugural uh, conference. Um, and you'll meet people who are, um, you know, PhDs who are in, you know, much older and more advanced in their careers. You'll meet people who are teaching English um, and that kind of thing in Southern Italy. Um, so it's a really interesting kind of group of uh, really intelligent Americans who are all kind of here in this new, and we're all in the same boat, um, kind of being plopped right into Italy um, and that kind of thing. So I, I can't recommend it enough because you have kind of a built-in system of people and support there um, along with the funding. And I think actually, in fact, we're in February, late February, Spencer and I are going to, to Rome together again for another conference. So there are several conferences and embassy events um, that you're kind of asked to be a part of and, and to represent the United States as a kind of a, as a cultural ambassador. And um, I think it's great that the Politico di Milano has this kind of program um, where they support, you know, one to two students uh, for, for, for a Fulbright Award. Um, because it really does open doors, especially with you know academics all across the you know the U.S. and and in Europe. Um, but yeah, I would I would say also I know some friends who have this the silver and uh, gold scholarships and that kind of thing. So there's lots of opportunities for um, for finding funding at Polytechnico. And I again, I, as I'm sure most people are aware, um, the fees are much much cheaper, you know, much lower than than a typical American um, graduate program. In architecture, I can't really speak for other programs, but at least for architecture and urban planning, it's significantly, um, you know, less costly uh, to go here than than to go to a, a U.S. institution, public or private. Yeah, that was a really good description. I think even if you're uncertain if you're qualified for any of these awards, I think it's worth applying to. The Fulbright call happens starting in about August and. The application process is pretty extensive and there there are a lot of things that you have to write and put together, but it does make it so that there aren't a ton of people who apply. So if you're willing to put in the effort to apply, I think you have a good ch chance of um, getting one of the awards. And I liked the process of doing it because like Colin mentioned earlier, it makes you think like, do I really want to do this? And um, you find out more things about the program that will interest you and um, it, it makes it so you, when you get in or whatever, you know that you want to go, which is a helpful decision making for later. So I think the whole application process I found um, to be really introspective. And yeah, I would, I would just suggest applying to the, to the school, see if you get a scholarship or apply to Fulbright and, and any of the other things, because I think you might surprise yourself. Or at least I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. 
And uh, so we um, let's now talk about uh, other type of topics. So, so Polytechnico is not only uh, about uh, studying and uh, hard work, but it also offers uh, um, many other activities. So um, events, uh, there are always events and things to do on campus every week. We organize a series of uh, cultural events uh, uh, related to cinema, related to uh, other uh, fields. And uh, um, we organize, uh, we are very um, well prepared uh, to welcome international students since we, we host international students. Um, we have hosted uh, international students for many years. And so we have uh, usually at the beginning of the semester, we have a welcome week uh, where um, you, you will be able to uh, get acquainted with um, with your campus, with the city where you where you will study and live for the next two years, and uh, we have a body program, very interesting because it's uh, a body is a student or lady enrolled in Politecnico di Milano, and um, will be your guide uh, throughout uh, your first steps at Politecnico di Milano. So it's really uh, useful to meet and to be guided by a current student who has gone through the same things at Politecnico di Milano. Uh, we have also residence at Politecnico di Milano, so our students can apply for um, the accommodation of the university. We, uh, uh, unfortunately, there's no space for all our students because we host so many students, but uh, there's a limited number of, of rooms in our halls of residence, but the university has agreement with many other private residents. And so we, we of course, will offer our help in finding the right accommodation. Uh, when studying at Politecnico di Milano, you can also benefit from uh, agreements, uh, many agreements that the university has with the other universities or with the international networks in order to study a double degree, for example, or to apply for an exchange program. So many students who have come from uh, other countries have benefited from uh, an exchange program that offers you the possibility to do uh, one semester abroad. There are many students associations, so according to your uh, your interests, uh, you may join the students association and meet uh, other students, um, cultural events, uh, sports also play an important role in the activities organized uh, for our students and uh, language courses, so a lot of things to do. Uh, apart from studying, that is your will be your first activity. And uh, well, mm, I I want to ask once again my uh, my students today uh, because I know that you you do you are involved in some activities. And so, Colin, yeah. yeah. Um, just to kind of add, I am I'm part of. Uh, the Santa Gidio community here. So it's a local charity organization that has a branch at the Politecnico. Um, and we we do a lot of different different activity, different charity activities and that kind of thing. Um, there's also, I'm also, I've gone to several Poliedro meetings, which is the LGBTQIA plus um, group on campus. Um, and that's, I met them through the Welcome Week, um, first kind of week activity that Francesca mentioned. Um, they have you know, the, all the student organizations have a kind of a different desk and tables where they where they can explain you know what they do and um, you can sign up for different activities for the for the for the year and that kind of thing. Um, I'm trying to think, yeah. Uh, and also, there's the Jurati uh, Sports Center, um, the gym, um, which is really nice and and quite new. Um, and I go there often, so there's there's a good amount of stuff and um, to do. I, I'd say. Yeah, within the, the first week, especially, there's a ton of events that the Erasmus Student Network will put together. I met all of my friends actually at a bowling night. We were all like on the same bowling team and I have had the same group of like eight friends since then. So th there are so many things put on by the, the school within the first week that um, make it easy to adjust. And I think I saw a question about the how is it finding accommodation? I think 
if you go to one of the campuses in Milan, it is quite challenging to find housing and the, the student housing fills up really, really quick. So I, I might not rely on it unless you go to one of the other campuses. Um, I found an, another apartment for next semester on Spot a Home and there's a, a few other like um, companies like that that will that work more with students than um, Italian people just trying to find leases. But I would start on that as early as possible, trying to find accommodation because stuff that fills up super, super fast in Milan. So I, I think, unfortunately, finding accommodation is probably the hardest thing about moving to Milan. But if you're on it fast, I think you should be able to find something. Yes, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard, but uh, it's possible. Uh, um, by the end, we are a university a student city, so there are other opportunities that you can uh, use in order to find accommodation. Um, so let's move to the uh, to the last part of our I'm sorry of our uh, presentation. And um, I want to show you some data related to uh, the career service, that is the office uh, offering our students support, strong support throughout the studies at Politecnico di Milano. Uh, Politecnico is very well linked to the company's world as since its foundation, uh, it strongly collaborates with the companies and with the company's research, etc. Uh, and so the career service um, organizes a lot of activities uh, throughout uh, the, the year in order for our students uh, to meet the job market, to understand what uh, the companies are looking for uh, with, uh, for example, career guidance days, uh, inviting, we invite companies on campus every week uh, to meet our students. We organize job fairs, uh, one international job fair here and one uh, local job fair. Um, a lot of workshops on different topics related to, of course, uh, looking for a job. So, for example, uh, we have a workshop on how to create a, a curriculum vitae or how to uh, behave during a job interview. So very useful tools that you can uh, use in uh, in your future. And of course, we the career service publish uh, publishes weekly a uh, lot of internship and job opportunities on our website. And here the results. So uh, very good employability statistics. So 82% of our international alumni are employed within one year from graduation. I will add to this data um, that 40, around 40% 40 of our students also find a job with uh, before graduating. So there are some students even starting their job before the graduation. And uh, half of our students, um, international students, of course, uh, decide to remain in Italy for their first uh, job experience. So it means that the experience uh, was good and uh, um, they want to, um, to, to stay for more, uh, for more time in Italy to, to work. And if you want to know more, of course, you can visit our career service uh, website and uh, you can also find the statistics related to all of our uh, programs. So important and interesting numbers and statistics related to the programs. Um, Maybe I th I know that uh, um, Colin, you know something. You you have gone through uh, the website, our career service website. So maybe yeah, uh, I would just say regarding uh, the website, it's really user friendly. It's super super great way to kind of um, look at internships uh, and job and full time jobs. Um, uh, I would also say that I think there was a question about how long you can remain in Italy after be after graduation um, and it's it's I think 18, 18 months if I'm not correct or if I'm not uh, wrong. Um, so after graduation you have 18 months to find a job which is I think is a plenty of time in Italy in Italy if you would like to remain in Italy um, which is something that I would like to do. So um, definitely that was an, a major factor in me choosing my master's program here was I knew that 
I, I really liked Europe and I liked Italy, um, I liked Milan and that um, I could have, you know, 18 months after graduation to, to find a job um, and, and remain in Italy. Um, and I would say, yeah, in general, uh, I think a lot of programs require an internship, um, and but there are many opportunities to find internships. Um, in fact, professors often um, will will approach you. I had one like a week or two ago approach me for an internship and that kind of thing in the future. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities for for internships um, either in the summer or during the semester um, for for students for master students. In my experience. Thanks. Yeah, I think so too. And for my program, at least, the internship is a required part of um, the graduation or credits. And you could do that through an internship with a company, but you can also do workshops at um, the university, which is basically a, a group project um, with a professor with a specific goal in mind for your workshop. But there are a ton of opportunities available. Yeah, I would advise people to maybe Google like Polini. Um, workshops and you can kind of see a whole list of different workshops where they have really interesting um, kind of short term, almost like short term curse, uh, courses um, where you work with a small group of students and a professor or two professors, three professors, and maybe an industry partner, um, depending on your on your program. And yeah, you can kind of, you know, you can gain experience that way. It's really interesting kind of and very different from, I think, the American system. I think doing the workshops is probably the the closest you can get to doing funded research. I haven't heard of any individual students um, having funded research as master's students. I think there's a lot more opportunity for it as a, a doctorate student. But I think someone asked about the funded research for master's. And I think that might be a little bit difficult to find if it's not through the form of an internship or a workshop. Yeah, exactly. So thank you very much. Very useful tips. Uh, and we are at the end of our presentation. So um, I thank you once again, Colin and Spencer for sharing your experience. And uh, I thank all, all, all the students attending the webinar. These are our contacts if you need any, if you have any other questions. Um, and if you want to speak uh, to our students enrolled in our programs, we have this uh, project uh, which is called Ask a Student. And uh, through this uh, QR code, you can uh, book an appointment with the students enrolled in the program you are interested in and make your question. So you can speak for uh, half an hour and uh, make all the questions that you have to, to solve your doubts. Um, and now I give the floor back to Stavrula, to our presenter. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you for thank a really great you. presentation. Um, I think you guys have touched on quite a few of the questions already, um, but maybe there are a few that we can uh, go through. There's one here about funded research. Is there a chance to gain funded research? Well, we have, uh, we have PhD programs. So our students uh, can continue their academic path with, uh, with a PhD and then uh, they can do research. They, they, can, um, they can do uh, a research, um, and, but the, the Master of Science programs actually are not research-based uh, at Politecnico di Milano and in general in the Italian system. So they are taught programs. Okay, thank you. And do you need to know Italian? Well, Italian is not required as we we have a lot of uh, programs taught entirely taught in English. So you are not required to study Italian before coming to Politecnico di Milan. Um, but we offer free of charge Italian language courses. So you will be able to study Italian language before um, when you when you are here to Politecnic at Politecnico. Okay, and this one goes to the students here. Um, hi, how was it to settle in Europe from the USA? Did it take a while? Um, I can I can kind of speak on that. I think Spencer talked a little bit about the the housing um, the housing kind of issue. Uh, definitely, is probably the the hardest. I would say in general, it's not for me. In my experience, it wasn't that hard to to settle into um, 
into in Milan because it's a very modern city. It's probably the, it's the, the you know the biggest and most international city in Italy. So it feels very uh, you know it feels almost a bit like New York or 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 you know Chicago or DC in a way. Um, so for me, it wasn't you know there were certain obviously there's always fun quirks and differences between you know the U.S. Um, system of and the way of doing things and the Italian way of doing things, but. I would say I, I prefer the Italian way in general of doing things, um, but I would, again, I would get stressed that, yeah, the housing, definitely, if you know you're going to Politecnico, I would get on it as fast as possible, and there are a lot of, uh, the university has, a, I think, a web uh, web page that mentions a bunch of different resources like Spot at Home and Home, home Away, there are a few, Idealista, idealista um, com. there are several online resources for finding apartments. Um, in Spencer's case, he used Spot a Home, which is a really good resource. Um, I, in my case, I walked around the city for a few days and found realtors the old-fashioned way, and um, did some tours and and found a, found an apartment. But I would say, in general, I would take the Italian approach to things, which is um, try to be calm and collected about the process. It could be stressful, I think, for an American, but just remember things will work out. Um, things always work out in Italy somehow. Um, but you just don't always know how they're going to work out until until they do. So I would say, again, in, in terms of transition, it wasn't that difficult. Milan, there's everything that you could ever find in, in the U.S. I mean, you can find pretty much anything. Um, but, you know, the housing, definitely get on it if you can. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I had been to Italy just once before, so I kind of knew what to expect. But if even if you have never been to Europe before, I think the transition is relatively seamless. I feel like because the city's so well connected by trams and buses and subways, I was never just wandering lost somewhere, not knowing where to go to get something. There's so many of everything, whether it's like a grocery store, or a hairdresser, or, um, whatever else, like a print shop, whatever else you might need. If you just wander around a little bit, you'll find everything you need. So I wasn't ever totally lost looking for something except maybe a Brita filter that was one thing that took me a while to find but, but I don't know that, that was it but um, I, I felt like it was relatively seamless it was definitely like some things were out of my comfort zone but in like all in a good way that I think allowed me to grow as a, a person and not feel totally overwhelmed but yeah. amazing thank you guys yeah. <laughs> Um, we have a question that's just come in uh, from a student. How can a how can I contact with any teachers to do with research topics or any kind of scholarships involved? Uh, so well, you can definitely contact us. Uh, I'm I'm I will share the screen with our contacts, and that's it. So you can definitely uh, use the QR code and, and contact us for, for more information on, on scholarship. And of course, you've, you also find um, many information on our website. As far as research is concerned, uh, as I was saying, our masters are more um, teach, uh, teaching based uh, and not research based. But if you are um, if you are studying a master's a lady, you may um, you may consider a PhD program. So uh, that are these are the options. And I would add just to um, just to kind of quickly say that yeah. I emailed uh, my program uh, director. The professor who's head of my program just to kind of get some information you know firsthand from from her about the program um you know uh, months and months before the application deadline just to kind of uh, understand what was you know what was what polytechnic was about and what the program was about so I, I wouldn't hesitate to reach out to professors and ask um you know and don't be shy to email them sometimes they respond sometimes they don't that's just what happens but i think being bold and just saying, hey, I'm interested. Can we talk about this over Zoom or just, you know, have a few email bullet point questions? Um, always, you know, usually professors um, are willing to reach out and talk to you. Perfect. Thanks. I think uh, being Thank proactive you. is probably the best best way of uh, putting that question to answer. And one last question before we go in our last minute. Um, will I be able to take any internships alongside my degree? 
uh, you you will actually many programs um, include an internship. So um, in many programs, it is mandatory actually to, to do an internship during the last semester. And uh, so, of course, um, if it's not mandatory, you can do it. And uh, on the Career Service website, you find a lot of information and uh, you will find the companies that are connected to Politecnico di Milano and offer internships. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, thank you guys for joining um, and thank you um, the presenters for all of your information. It's been super invaluable. I am sure there'll be a lot of students who will want to know more. Um, and yes, to those who couldn't join today, we will be sending this to you in an email and uh, the recording for you by tomorrow. All right, thank you everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Thanks.